Hi, welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and on today's episode we are going to be talking about the exquisite, over-emotional, with the wonderful David Penn. Hi David. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> good, good, thank you. Good. Uh, congratulations on such a wonderful book and all the kind of flurry of activity over the last few weeks. It's been crazy. It's been over, well, it's been over emotional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, it's, it, it's been a dream come true and just trying to keep my feet on the ground. But yeah, it's, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> Especially obviously in the, uh, the Guardian at the weekend. Uh, the Sunday Times. Sunday actually. Times, oh my Sorry. God. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, um, <laughs> I, got, I got a tweet being like, oh, you're the Sunday Times Children's Book of the, the Week. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I rushed out, rushed out to get a paper and yeah, so that's fun and ah, amazing. <laughs> uh, oh, crazy, crazy. Um, so... I suppose we have to first touch on that starting scene, hmm. um, <laughs> which uh, incredible. I didn't. I didn't expect it. I loved it. Um, uh, straight out of the boys. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> was that your intention, just to kind of start with a start with a bit start of with a bang? Yeah, literally. start with a bang. <laughs> uh, should I say what it is? I think yeah, it's not too much of a like. No, it's thing. literally the first line. Yeah. Okay. So. Basically, the main character has these powers, and he kisses a boy for the first time, and the guy's head explodes. Um, that was kind of like the... I, I had this like idea of emotion powers like rolling around in my head, and I was like, well, what is the logical extreme of that? Like, what could... And then this idea came to me almost immediately, and I was like, oh, that's really, really funny and macabre, and I think it would kind of... If I was you know, thinking back to when I was a 17-year-old, like... Over a overthinking kind of neurotic gay kid. If that happened to me, I'd be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> um, so it was a great way to kind of like kick off the plot and take him to this terrible, terrible seaside town. Yes. And did you? Um, so the kind of whole thing about emotions and kind of being a emo emo monster. <laughs> Were you an emo kid? Is that what I was <laughs> I tried to be. Uh, <laughs> I always say I I just really liked the hair. Um, so <laughs> I did like some sort of some emo music. Yeah, I, I, I listened to a couple of my Chemical Romance songs once. Um, and I said to my mum, can I dye my hair black? And she was like, no, you have lovely blonde hair. No. <laughs> so I didn't. Um, but I did used to straighten my hair within an inch of its life. And it used to come down to my chin. And um, I went to an optician, and they were like, "Yeah, this is why you've got bad eyesight." <laughs> so now it's off my face. <laughs> but you know, I, I I tried to be an emo kid, but I wasn't cool enough. Uh, <laughs> see, I think you get a bit of guy liner. Bit of guy liner. It's not. Really, I feel like my aesthetic is like. Uh, eager corgi and that doesn't quite <laughs> mesh with the like darkness uh, my life is pain doesn't quite mesh with that but yeah. it's quite scary as well at the moment to see that so many of those songs that we kind of grew up listening to are like 15 20 years old now. Uh, it's just like uh, oh lord okay terrifying when they're like oh retro and i'm like oh no that's that's still on my spotify okay <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure now oh, i'm becoming my parents <laughs> Okay. Um, so we have to touch on the amazing kind of like I suppose naming convention. So um, tell us about the seaside town. So I am from the south coast. Uh, I grew up near Bournemouth, and I, I've been to plenty of seas. Everyone loves the seaside during during the summer, but during the winter it's hell. It's uh, it's cold. It's really brutal. It's very grey. It's very depressing, and so. Uh, when Stephen, the main character, he's trying to be as miserable as possible, and I thought, where would I go to be miserable? And it, <laughs> probably the seaside. It was also inspired by a trip. I, I did a short film just before I started writing this that was set in a town that will remain nameless for legal reasons. <laughs> uh, uh, so I was like, oh great, this is kind of what it's based off of, um, and I wanted somewhere that just sounded gross, so Grunz Beyond Sea kind of like oozed out of me uh, <laughs> uh, and that is where that that's kind of where that came from I didn't want it to be set in anywhere in particular because if I was like it's you know based on Bournemouth then oh, Bournemouth, Bournemouth yeah. Waterstones would burn all the copies of yes. my book so it's not based on Bournemouth uh, <laughs> but yeah 
it did kind of give me some <coughs> flashbacks. There's a certain seaside town I'd never been to until last year. Oh yeah. And I went there for a, a, a visit, and it very much had this kind of... It was once great. It was in the 1920s, yes. 30s. Yes. And now it's just... They would go there for lashings of ginger beer, yes. and when people wouldn't go away, this... Yeah, there's a lot of... <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of, like, old Victorian seaside towns. Yes. Um, so, actually, in Bournemouth, it's not anymore, but there used to be um, these old, horrible hotels that were, like, colour TV in every room, and I was like... Oh my god, it's like 2005, why are they still advertising <laughs> this? Um, so that was again, uh, I liked the idea that Grunsby on Sea was kind of trapped in, uh, sort of frozen in time a little bit, and there are some reasons for that that kind of uh, you find out in the book, but I liked this idea that everything's kind of trapped in time, so he can just go there and be miserable, and no one's around to affect him, and that's this sort of oppressive atmosphere. Yes. And the... Um Obviously, with the I don't know if you've like how tricky it was writing kind of the multiple POVs. Yeah. Because obviously there's some fantastic kind of um, not even side characters. I wouldn't. No. They're just um, they all kind of feel quite. All four of them. Are, yeah. yeah. All four of them are, are important. <coughs> um, was that kind of difficult to keep? a track of kind of, okay, where was this person when I was last? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a very chronological writer. I don't okay. like, uh, when people are like, I wrote the first thing and then the last thing, I'm like, ah, no, logic, order. <laughs> um, so I knew quite early on that I wanted to do multiple POVs. Um, and so I wrote the first, like, chunk from Stephen's point of view. And then I reached a point where one of the characters enters and I was like, I think it'd be fun if it was from her point of view, so mm. kind of necessitated that. And then there's also a fifth point of view, uh, which are like written reports. Um, and I thought that was just fun to kind of mix up the format a little bit. But keeping track of all the POVs, they're, they're all very defined. I can very quite like I can very easily know this is a this is a Freya word, this is a Troy word. Yeah. Um, so I think I really sort of like honed what their voices were before I went so yeah that's kind of <laughs> it was it was actually a lot easier to keep track of than I thought um and also it's really great to kind of uh, obfuscate things so if there's like secrets or things I don't want people to know about I can swap point of view so it was always a conscious decision about who's the best person to tell this story in this moment and the um, the Americanisms with Troy was yeah. that <laughs> how difficult was that to write? Or are you just like? Well, I actually studied uh, in America for a little bit. I uh, My degree was American theatre, um, so I went to drama school and learned how to do American accents and all about America, and then my last year they're like, oh yeah, you're going to be in London, uh, here's how to do some British accents, and chuck me out <laughs> to the world. Uh, but I also, I as a part of that, I studied abroad for six months uh, in Syracuse in New York. And so a lot of Troy's, uh, <laughs> a lot of Troy's uh, perspective is kind of, my own perspective as a fish out of water in this other uh, country and then vice versa we had a lot of american exchange students come over um so he's based on a couple of people um no one like specifically but he's kind of, i've kind of drawn inspiration from a couple of different people in my uh studies um so yeah I, I i enjoy that kind of fish out of water that uh transatlantic clash um because there's grunsby on sea is a very uh endemic of a lot of Britain and I feel like Americans don't see that side so putting him in this old Victorian uh, seaside town where suddenly he's like wait what is this why why is there a washing machine in the kitchen ah <laughs> like it, just it it, it 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 was a really fun point of view to write mm. and the oh just so adorable like the crush as well like when he's kind of oh yes there's a very very sweet slow burn yes, romance throughout yes. yeah Minimum spice. Minimum spice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on a Nando's rating, it is uh, lemon and herb. Lemon and herb. Yeah, lemon okay. and herb. Everyone can enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so if you had like a favourite character to write, Ooh. or even, okay, if you had to hang out with a character, go for lunch, who would it be? <sighs> If I had to have, okay, so if I were to hang out with a character, it would be Freya, yes. um, because uh, who is Stephen's best friend. She is the uh, pushy, 
straight friend that every gay kid had <laughs> at school. <laughs> um, talks a mile a minute, so fiercely intelligent and articulate, and I feel like she'd be a hoot to hang out with. I feel like she'd be a pain in the arse, mm. but <laughs> I can say arse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, great. Yeah. You've heard worse. Okay, good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like she'd be a pain in the arse to hang out with, but I feel like she'd be the most fun. The, actually, the, the most fun to write was Troy. Um, he's such a wholesome, earnest, uh, best boy character that putting him in scenarios where he's just so uncomfortable, it's just, it's really fun to play with that dichotomy. Um, and just, yeah, uh, him being so, ah, uh, about this Britishness. <laughs> That's how you... Uh, yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, that, that, that. Uh. <laughs> um, and who would you invite to games night? For one of your legendary D&D &D oh. sessions. <laughs> um, I would not invite Freya. <laughs> There's a part where like they play Monopoly and she like embeds the thimble in the wall. She's very competitive. Um, who would I invite? Um, I feel like... Mm, Probably none of them. <laughs> uh, no, I'd probably invite Steven, my main character. I feel like he'd try as hard as he could to try and like invest in it. Like, D&D is all about yeah. investing in uh, the world you're creating. Uh, I feel like Freya would try to win, Marcus would check out quite easily, and Troy would be confused by everything. So I'll go for Steven. Yes. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. That make, yeah, definitely. He could be like, maybe like a rogue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah, like what? Um, so we have to, um, as well, the, uh, looking at kind of the emotions that power uh, Stephen and, um, the, I suppose there's almost like a cheat sheet in the stuff. Yes. That <laughs> so for a lot of obviously fantasy books, you're going back and forth to the map, to the glossary, yeah. to the, like, <laughs> many, many names of characters. Yeah. But for you, it's a very different thing because you've got the cheat sheet of like emotions and like yeah. colours and stuff. So... Yeah, did, was that like an important kind of thing to help kind of people keep track of? Yeah, actually, it was a it was weirdly a uh, later addition to when uh, we were shopping around to editors and things like that. I think it was something that we wanted to put in just as a little. Uh, it's also like I I really like the Final Empire Brandon Sanderson stuff, which has a lot of like this does this, this does this, like hard magic yes. system. And I knew that there were a lot of sort of things to keep track of, so I thought it'd be quite a fun thing to have, uh, like, like an inside cover. <laughs> There's a little cheat sheet um, that shows, like, from Stephen's point of view, that what his powers do and how he kind of like narrates them. Um, I tried as well to make that everything makes sense in context, so people shouldn't need to flip back and forth, but it's there if you need it, and I think it just helps to keep. Because uh, uh, obviously, uh, well, obviously, you don't know. Stephen's powers are kind of the opposite. So when he feels happy, terrible things happen, and when he feels sad, good things happen, and uh, vice versa, and a bunch of other powers he has. Uh, when he's disgusted by something, it's drawn towards him, and when he really wants something, he, it's pushed away from him. So because there's kind of that extra step, I think sometimes it's nice just to have a. Uh, have something they can refer, uh, readers can refer back to and go, ah, okay, just in case they were confused. But it, it should all make sense in context. And each power kind of comes with a different colour that kind of manifests. So, uh, yeah, it's just a nice way to keep track of everything. Definitely, definitely. Um, and this is obviously the first part of a trilogy. It is the first part of a trilogy, Sorry, indeed. <laughs> How are the um, next books coming along? Is there any little spoilers you could potentially... Mm, maybe. <laughs> Looking to my purposes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, book two is uh, on. Book two is uh, two days away from being handed into my editor. Um, it's gone to my uh, my husband's read it and my agents read it. So just a few final tweaks before I hand it into my editor. Um, so book two's done, and then I have to start book three quite soon because there's quite a. Uh, they're both coming out next year, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, but book two uh, sees the characters uh, just about to head to university, so it's just on the cusp of being adults, uh, just on the cusp of like moving away. They move to London, uh, and how that kind of affects them and. Stephen and Troy will be going on their first mission, um, but I'll say no more about that. <laughs> That's very exciting. Mm. <laughs> very exciting. Um, so, we've mentioned before, obviously, uh, off camera, but you do a lot of things on the stage, you do a lot of improv and things like that. So, 
how did that kind of inform the characters and how mm. you write? Yeah, so I do, I, I do long form improvisation, um, part of a pin, uh, improv group called Pinch Punch. We do uh, hour long shows, so you're having to make a character and then <laughs> maintain that for an hour. Um, so point of view is like so crucial because if your character is just I've got a funny accent and a hat. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep that going. Um, but making a point of view that you can kind of boil down to like a sentence means that you can put that character into any scenario and it kind of makes sense. Mm. So that's the kind of approach I made with these with these characters that um, at any point I could bung Freya into a completely different world and I know how she would react to that. Um, like her point of view is that she always wants to know something she's she's always curious she's trying to find out the truth mm -hmm. so that's kind of her like driving point of view um i use a lot of improv in the world building um to kind of establish what the powers are why they exist what else can they do um so that was kind of the main f use of that in definitely mm -hmm. the world building and character point of view um yeah yeah, it, it definitely, I could, I don't know, I don't know if you were doing this, I can imagine you kind of improving the different characters. <laughs> Some people do say, do you sit there and you're like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah, like a, a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't improvise and then write it all down, but I can kind of like, so I'll, I'll sit there and go, uh, uh, uh. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and then obviously, uh, Over Emotional has loads of jokes in. Yes. Uh, so being an improv comedian, I've, I've stuffed it full of as many jokes as possible, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and what was your kind of, what's your best joke? I mean, I just love the Jesus tits. Like, mm. I'm sorry, I just, like, <laughs> just drop that into every yeah. meeting. <laughs> Jesus tits. Um, that's definitely like a Freyaism. Yes. Um, <laughs> my agent, before we sent this around, she was like, "What is the? Where does the comma go? Is it Jesus's tits? Is it Jesus comma tits?" And I was like, "I don't know. Just Jesus tits. I don't think it's his tits." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Stephen has piss biscuits. That's yes, his kind yeah. of thing. So some of these little trigger words kind of slot in uh, for characters. Um, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. It's too. It's 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 very English, but in the in the like the nicest possible like yeah. that kind of like authentically like uh, I'm not meant to swear but I want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm a teenager and I want to say yeah I think Brits are very creative we're very creative with our swearing so yes. uh, that was kind of my uh, creative way around just dropping the f-bomb in the middle of a <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 no one's gonna notice yeah. no one's gonna notice um yeah so Thanks so much, obviously, for joining us today. Um, and as our kind of last question, we always love to hear what people are reading, what they're currently playing, and what they're looking forward to kind of watching and coming up later this year. So what are your kind of... Lovely. Uh, so uh, playing, I'll start with that. Just finished Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, and I'm playing Final Fantasy 16. I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. Oh. This is obviously going to take me years to finish. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm the obsessive person that needs to do every single... Yeah. yeah, I need to do everything. Uh, whereas my husband is like ignoring all the side quests left and right. And I'm like, no! <laughs> you need to find that lady's cat! You know. Um, <laughs> Book-wise, uh, I just finished... Uh, I finished Happy Head by Josh Silver. Um, How to Die Famous by Benjamin Dean. Both fantastic yes. YA queer books. I'm currently reading Murder on a School Night uh, by Kate Weston. Um, which is fantastic. Um, very period positive, um, hilarious, like really, really funny murder mystery. Um, those are my, those are my current, why I, I read a lot of YA, yeah. so that's my current uh, YA. I've got a huge TBR uh, pile, uh, though, <laughs> so I will be getting through the rest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best to read a lot of uh, British YA and a lot of um, debut YA as well. Yes, yeah. Oh, there's just so many, like, good Things yes, so like, many things oh, are coming out. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I can't believe as well. I like. I was trying not to talk about Final Fantasy because I find all, all, <laughs> all of my interviews turn into like Final yes. <laughs> fan girl moments. Um, I haven't started the new one yet. I know. No. So, mm. It's uh, I. I came to Final Fantasy through Kingdom Hearts, so I came later. Uh, this is a very Kingdom Heartsy kind of like action RPG. So uh, very much enjoying that aspect yes. of it too. Yeah, it's. Um, I think we need to. We did a uh, FPTV a while ago for uh, Fun Fantasy, and I think we need to do another one. Absolutely. So you're 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 in. Yes. You're, you're in. Yeah, it's just so people can just chat. But I think 
an important thing I think worth mentioning about JRPGs and I think a lot of people who play them because they're so kind of accepting of differences and mm. and you know the main character is quite often you wouldn't imagine is going to kind of necessarily save the day yeah. and it's just great to kind of I think that's why a lot of people kind of find JRPGs yeah especially like a lot of like uh, a lot of square stuff as in like square Enix, um a lot of uh, the things like Xenoblade and Final Fantasy and all these kind of things really like have a lot of queer coding to them and like yes. a lot of high drama yeah. and camp <laughs> so a lot of you know it's not shocking that a lot of queer people kind of like gravitate around um, those games uh, for, for certain yeah oh yeah definitely I'm playing uh, Tales of Symphonia at the moment okay. Like yeah. the remaster, and they do like these. They're so campy. These little oh. skits they do, and they're talking to the camera, going, "Hey, why don't we go find this bad man?" And it's just like you. Go. <laughs> it's too good. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, in kind of reference to that, and obviously reference to over emotional, it's I think for maybe for people who are kind of struggling to come out and struggling to talk about queerness, it's a very important very important book um so thank, thank you. you so much thank you i i, I always try to like <laughs> uh center queer identity and like um you know some people say like what's the difference between like adult and young adult books and i'm like i feel like young adult is like you're trying to is what like centered around identity um yes. it's like who i am i'm trying to figure it out and i feel like Hopefully, I hope <laughs> uh, that this some queer teenager somewhere picks us up and finds that kind of like home in it somewhere. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you for having me. Much. Um, and yes, we will have signed copies going to all of our stores, so you can order online or pop into a nearest branch of Forbidden Planet and grab a signed copy. Um, but yes, we'll see you again soon. Bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.